Right, it's 2013. I'm just taking us back to October 2007 when I was in Ifracombe visiting the museum, um, graveyards and that sort of thing. So I'm carrying on. I've recently just been to Mortho, which is up the road. Um, and um, now exploring the cemeteries and archives of Ilfracombe in 2007. Uh, uh, this is a cassette tape recording, which I'm calling an audio pod now, and it will be put on disc to be saved with photos. Come up to the museum. They get, allocated me a parking space for today, and then I hope to go around a few graveyards as well later on this afternoon. And then get back here before dark so I can have a, a walk round because apparently there's lots of nice walks around here. Over and out. Right, it's going over half past two in the afternoon in Ifracombe. I had um, at least four hours in the museum today with lots of material to look at, like newspaper cuttings, burial baptism, marriage records of the um, Loverings, Barberies and Irwins. There wasn't a great deal on the Irwins. I'm popping in there again tomorrow because she's going to um, print off some photos for me, um, which I which will come in handy, of Barberies and that. I'm now on the outskirts of... Um, well, I'm, I'm still in Ifracombe, I've, I've gone further out, and I'm, um, I'm at the cemetery now, and uh, I'm just thinking of the name of this road that it's off of, so I struggle to get up, of course. Um, I haven't got me, oh, Marlborough Road, I went up Marlborough Road to get here, so I'm going to have a look around the cemetery now. Over and out for a minute. Uh, I'm looking on the Marlborough Cemetery Road. Marlbury Road Cemetery board outside the gates and there's um, a Mr. G. Lovering 01271 864075 who's the cemetery sexton so that's interesting and there's sort of a plot of it the chapel I'm by the chapel it's on a hill out on the outskirts of um, Ufracombe and from here I can see the the big um mask, tel telephone or something mask. Um, I can see the the water, the sea and Ifracombe down below. And in the background there's a the noise of kids. So I don't know where I'm going to start. I'm going to go on a clockwise thing and just take potluck really. And go round in a clockwise direction. It shuts quite early as well, something like half past four, half past three some days. So it's good job I parked outside. It's very early to shut the cemetery, isn't it? I'm not on sort of an older area. Um, I don't know if there's many old ones in here because this is the newer bit. I've seen a couple of darks and nights. Some of the names. Um, I've got a few names from the later Barbaries will be buried here, you know, and Loverings and that. Later ones. Well, I found Nicholas's grave. It's um, under a big pine tree, not far after I've walked him round the top circular pathway. It's until we meet again. It's a grey, slaty stone with a grey surround and greyish pebbles, little stones in it. And it's got to the and it's got a, a golden anchor on it. <coughs> and it's to the beloved memory of Betty, devoted wife of Nicholas Barbary. Died June the twenty fourth, nineteen thirty three, aged thirty nine. Also Harry, their beloved son, who died November the fourteenth, nineteen thirty one, aged fourteen. Also of Nicholas 
beloved husband died October the 9th, 1957, aged 91. He's got reunited. So this is uh, the son of William Henry here. So this is quite important, I found him. It's funny, she never told me he would be here. But it's um, set in a nice plot. It's that the names are big and bold, with a black background and a grey lettering. There's also a little plaque on the bottom here. It says, also Joan, daughter of the above. That's Nicholas. Who died the 1st of September, 1998, aged 78. So I'm going to take a couple of pictures of this. This is a good one. And they're buried here. At the top of the hill. It's funny, really. I almost feel as if I know them all this research I've done. Well, that didn't take long, that was pretty straightforward. Well, I've got them straight away. So, I don't know if there'll be that many Barbaries in here now. Um, it could be that there might be others. Of course, William Henry's buried in the old churchyard. There might be Loverins and Irwins. There might not be. I'm having a bit of a Look round. Yeah, it's a nice stone. Um, oh, there's a William Crispin with a granite cross on top. Husband of Mabel Crispin, who died in 1931, aged 60. And she died, she was called Mabel Pierce Crispin, and she died in 1938, age 68. That's interesting, isn't it? I'd only be doing a bit of scanning. I found the, the grave I was looking for, really, of Nicholas. Because Nicholas, <coughs> a bit of history, is the brother of Alfred Edmund or Edward Barbary, who is um, Marion's father. So Nicholas Barbary was Marion's uncle trap up there. That was Marion's uncle. And so, uh, so there is quite a relationship. So if it was her uncle, it's Pete's great uncle. And Zara's great uncle twice removed, I think. There's a scamp. Somebody married into the scamp family. I can't remember it was at the moment. I'm not, like I said, I'm not expecting to find many here. Some tuckers here. A load of horrible kids out of school. Shouldn't be even allowed in graveyards. They got no respect. They're horrible, the kids today. Let them leave the air. Maybe it's me getting older. <laughs> There's a few jewels as well. <coughs> right, that's a big section finished with. Some really big fern pine trees. Old ones here. It's a big graveyard. Nicely kept. Nicely, lots of nice trees. Going into another area now. Section 17 and all that sort of thing. I don't know where to begin, there's so many. I'm not really expecting to, to come across a, any more Barbaries, really. So the, like I said, it's a good grave. Zara's great great uncle. That's all he is, not far away at all. Nicole Barbary. I'm having a good look round, even though I'm scanning. Oh, I found another one. I found one. We've got to the ever loving memory of our dearly beloved son, Alan David Barbary, died the 14th of June, 1969 age 20, lovingly remembered by mum, dad, brothers and sisters. 
a flower that bloomed but will never fade from our memories. Also, Sheila Dorothy Barbary, mother of the above, died 16th of April 1978, aged 52. And a dear dad, Thomas Lovering Barbary, died the 6th of February 1937, aged 72. This will be Another great uncle, I believe it would be a great uncle, of, of, of Zara's, Thomas, it could be, it might not be, it might be um, one of Nicholas's sons actually, it could be, got to work out. Yeah, oh no, he died in 1997. No, this will be a son of Nicholas, I'm sure of it. I've got it written down at home anyway. Find his grave, it's up from number 17, I think. In the second section that I went through, right in the corner, more or less, of the last big plot. And then Ethel May Irwin died 30th of March, 1965, aged 75. Also, George Irwin, husband of the above, who died the 29th of February, 1976, aged 91. That could be a descendant from Anne Irwin's relatives. Blackmore Chug, those are the names. Davy, of course. Bennett. All very local names. Coming up around here to avoid those hugs that are down there. So, <coughs> scan up here. Up this bit a minute. Coma, that's another popular one. There's a George Davy, died in 1959, aged 76. His wife was Gertrude, she died also in 1959. A couple of months later, aged 77. Gammon. Gammon's another popular name. They've actually got a children's area as well here with all, a lot of them with little angels on. Yeah, I found another one. I found the treasured memories, memories of Douglas Nicol Barbary. Died the 16th of August at 1985, aged 64. Beloved husband of Dora. Father of Richard and Linda and much loved Grampy, so we meet again. Then treasured memories of Dora Alice Barbary died the 16th of May 2002, aged 77. Beloved wife of Douglas, mother of Richard and Linda, a much loved nanny, reunited at last. That's a marble type structure and it's in the form of um, an open book, like a Bible. And then next to the summers. Um, well he was 61, I think he could be the son of Nicholas again. So he's going to be a cousin of some description, twice removed, for Zara. Right, I've stumbled across the first Lovering, Aubrey W. Lovering, 5th of September 1965, that's all it says, Aubrey. It's got a black band round it. It's a very small one that's been given a safety audit check. Yeah, it's a very small stone. Comes up just above my knee and it's got two big pegs behind it and it's strapped with a leather strap. The robins is of course another name that keeps cropping up. I got a feeling there were some robins that married Barbaries or Loverings or somebody. Of course, Conabeer is another one. Hewitt. Right, I've now finished that big section, 17, and I don't know exactly, I know it started on 17. Now there's another big field, one of them. <coughs> These are even newer stones, and there's creme stones as well. I should imagine people from all the outlying villages possibly bring people here because it is quite a big graveyard actually really quite big for um, a southwest country town 
Well, you know what I'm doing after I leave Africa? I'm going to Woolacombe. So I'm going to try and get something to eat there. I haven't had any dinner for two days. In the distance, I can see a George Edward Irwin. I'll make my way towards that one in a minute. I was reading up in the library. Irwin was once Irwine. And part of the history is that the name was brought down from Scotland during James I's reign by a rogue that um, was on the side of the king against some other important person. And he went to live in Mort Morto and changed his name to Ir Irvine, no, Irwin. That's some Scottish, it is Scottish name as well, actually a Celtic name. I thought it sounded like that, actually. And the arch archivist seems to think that so the other ones in Coomartin will be related to the the ones in um, Africa. Right, I'm doing my scanning. Because when I do scanning, I can often miss out a whole section by forgetting to go back to that pit. Right, got in loving memory of George Edward Irwin, devoted husband, father, grandfather and great grandfather, passed peacefully away, 22nd July 1997, is 81. Rest in peace. It's a grey marble um, stone and it's got a shepherd's crook on it. Don't know the relationship, but he was born towards the end of the 18th century, so it could be a great nephew of um, Anne Irwin. I can see a Jean Barbary right from back here. Great big pink marbly stone right on the top of the hill. I'll take a picture of it, not far from the Crem stones, with peace written on the top. They've all got really good gravestones, this lot. It's all very well done out. I saw this one from miles off. Right, says Peace, in cherished memory of dearly beloved wife, mother and gran, Jean Barbary, who fell asleep the 23rd of September 1994, aged 68, sadly missed, and her husband, Frederick Barbary, fisherman, died the 20th of October 2006, aged 84. So he's only been passed away a year now. I was reading about him earlier. He was one of the, the last of the old lifeboat men in the family. Um, there is, I think, he might have a grandson who's a solicitor now, but they're still interested in um, boating and they've got the princess. So I've got a feeling it's this family that this is the grandfather of the ones that own the princess. He's only been dead a year. So you've got this sort of pinky, salmon coloured marble stone with gold lettering um, highlighting Jean Barbary and Frederick Barbary. Well, they're appearing now. It's starting to appear, the more recent ones, but all related in the beginning. They're all got a common ancestor, and that is Sarah's great, great, great grandfather, William Henry Barbary. I don't know if it's a great, great, let me see. Her grandmother, it was her grandmother's grandfather. Yeah, then there was Pete, so it's Zara's great, great, great grandfather. All these Barbaries in here are all common descendants of him and Mary Ann Lovering. Oh, I was freezing in that museum, it was like ice in there. But I'm bloody hot now. I'm baking up, actually. I'm looking around, I'm climbing about the graveyard, looking for her winds. <laughs> well, it looks like I'm at the final section now. At the top we've got a round bit which houses all the crumb stones. I'm now on the final section. I'm just going to take my jumper off, I'm too hot. So from all the old bar, Bond graveyard, 
for Barbary's in um, the old graveyard where the church is. We've now got lots more in this part. I must have got up to five or six by now. This is massive and it's beautiful. Beautiful um, surroundings. Oh God, I've only come across one small lovering grave. I don't know where they all are. All over Coombe Martin, I think. Yeah, there's a lot in the old graveyard, of course. Lots of loverins in there. Nicholas the loverin, he's in there. Just gonna stop for a fag break. By the sound of old Nick Barbary, he sounds like a sort of character you'd be scared of when you were a kid. So imagine when Marion ever saw him, if she ever did. He would have been a scary sort of person to visit. Hello, doggy. Where have you come from then? Well, basically, it's been a very good day today. We had a very good day in the, in the museum. And I think Barnstable could be on the cards tomorrow as well at some point. Might have to go there tomorrow. I'll have to stay another night, won't I? What day is it? So I stayed. Oh, I don't know what day it is today. It's Thursday, so I said Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I might have to stay Saturday night. Three nights. Alright, I've done really well. I've done nearly the whole graveyard actually, quite thoroughly. And I have found a number of barberies. I only found one lover in there. It's interesting. Nobody in the Cremstone bit. Um, oh yeah, I found a Daniel Lovering, by the way. So, July the 17th, 1943, 87. Also, his beloved wife, Sarah Lovering, died March 29th, 1946, age 83. Right, that's weird, really. Daniel Lovren, but I found Daniel Lovren's in the old churchyard, and I found quite an old one there as well, so I can't imagine he's got two. It's very grey and bleak, apart from the golden anchor that was on it. I've got a massive oil leak at the moment. to do about that. I'm going to Woolacombe now. It's, uh, well, it's only 20 to 4. It seems too early to go there, but they might have a church like in the room. Yeah, so I found a few. Now, was that a Daniel Barbary or a Daniel Lovering I just had it there? I think it was a Daniel Lovering. a lover in. And the thing is about it, I mean all the kids are at school now, they're all congregating in the graveyard. I've done the whole graveyard there, there might be one or two that I might miss, but I doubt it very much, but I can't always be sure because it is big. I need to go back down that Marlborough Road to go up. if I carry on up there. Now I think I'll go to Woolacombe now and have a wander around there. But I think I'm going to start doing the graveyards now. I've still got plenty of time, that's the only thing. I've got three hours of light left. Again, if I go now, I'm going to avoid all the traffic coming in from work, and I, if I get over to Woolacombe now. One of the last Barbaries I did, I'm, I was in plot 15, which is near the round Cremstones at number 10. So I've done 
all of it really. It goes from when you first go in. I think he might be in plot four. Nicholas Barbary. It goes up to. It goes from. I can't see a number one. Yeah, I can. From 1 to 19. 